Yeah, as we've mentioned on pole then is the Cooper of Will Nuttall alongside in another Cooper, John Yor and Nigel Batcher in the Keith Climax make up the front row. A Cooper and an AC behind them in row two from fourth and fifth is Ian Nuttall and Charles Clegg. Row three, Charlie Martin in the Connaught, Alexander van der Loff in the HWN Alta F2 and Paul Grant in the Cooper. Then behind them, row four, the Maserati of Michael Birch. Alex Simpson alongside in the Alvis. That is your top ten. Row five in 11th is the ERA of Julian Wilton. Then it's the Maserati of Joseph Rett. Meyer, Patrick Blakeney Edwards in the Fraser Nash rounds out the top 15. Eric Stays and Ben Finder, the Cooper in the ERA rounding out at the top 15. No Cooper of Stephanie Wilton. Uh, there will be an empty slot there. Alongside will be the Cooper of Christopher, uh, Christopher Phillips and Bjorn Epson in the Talbot. Uh, if we can get Bjorn out there, he'll be starting from the pit lane if he can make his way through. And the final two rows, the Delage of Volker Hitchett, uh, Stefan Rettemeyer in the Maserati. And at the back will be David Little in the Bentley, Klaus Dold in the Maserati 6CM and Marcus uh, Nesius in the other Maserati 6CM. Nine rows making up this grid for the first race of the day here for Sunday on the 81st Goodwood members meeting. The sun peeking out from the skies, much chillier than it was yesterday, but the wind has certainly died down and we are about to witness some fantastic racing, I'm sure. Grand Prix, Formula 2 of Voiturette cars that race between 1935 and 1953. So a really nice mix of manufacturers and brands involved in this race. But right now it's William Nuttall on pole in the 32 Cooper who will have the best view in the house, but he's got John Yor and Nigel Batcher alongside as the revs rise and we get ready to go racing. The Parnell Cup is underway, a poor start from Nigel Batchelor who bogs down and gets absolutely swamped, but a good start from our pole to Will Nuttall, but John Yor is going to try and sweep round the outside. Can Yor and the other Cooper take the lead going into Madrid? I think he has done. Yor from second on the grid leads this race, but Nuttall slots in right behind. He's not going to give this one up. Looks to the inside as they now approach four Water. Can he get alongside? No. Tucks in behind. Your lead, but a poor start, Bruce, from Nigel Batcher on the front row as well. Well, on the formation lap, he also had a little bit of a problem going away. And talk about going away, the first two have really made their escape. John Your from uh, third on the grid, second on the grid, into the lead from Will Nuttall now. Of course, Will will be positioning his Cooper in behind, through some areas to go, into the compression. And most first overtaking place for him will be into lap, and he's already made his... Uh, played his bid, he's going down the inside but not quite close enough, John is going faster because the outside line is a bigger sweep into that double apex corner, a look in the middle of the pack just out of sight of the, this picture yeah, it should be the Keith that was so poor away from the line from Nigel Batcher, that will be going back towards the front but at the best of the ERAs is going really well Julian Wilton, car number 7, has vaulted up the order into about 5th position from I think 11th on the grid yeah, and you can see up front, though, the, the whites of uh, John Yor's eyes. The visor completely transparent as he makes his way. You can see how hard they have to work these cars. The elbows moving side to side as they now come into the braking zone for the final chicane to end lap one of the Parnell Cup. It's a 20-minute race. We're already down to 18 minutes and 22 seconds. But across the line, then, John Yor will lead. But it's going to be side by side with Will Nuttall. What can Will Nuttall do down the inside late on the brakes? Going to make the move can you hang it out round the outside he's gonna have the wider line can Nuttall do anything about it not on that occasion but Nuttall is not giving this one up without a fight back on to the next straight side by side Nuttall sweeps round the outside tries to make a move still not far enough in front has to settle behind for now but this is going for hammer and tongs for the lead of this race right from the get-go do historic races race do they ever john york super super bold brilliant exit far better exit from the chicane from will nuttall but when he got down to magic on the outside so it was a longer way round. but john york just kept his foot in this is the car that started uh, was uh, raced by Tony Crook, the man who went on to own Bristol and uh, uh, was converted, added cycle wings, became a sports car for a while. That was the way the cars could chop and change. But right now, he's just got this ability to carry even better flow than Will Nuttall. They're going uh, through the lab and kick now. Where's the best of the rest? It's uh, Ian Nuttall will be third in line, but uh, he was four seconds down on the, on the start, finish straight, and even further back, he's not in the back of the shot. So these two have got the class of their own. Nigel Batchner, who started the outside of the front row, that awful, woeful start for him in the Keith, unfortunately down in seventh. He's working his way back to the front. There's no way he's catching his first two. It's a 20-minute race. No, they're already off and away. And just on that last lap, really attacking Will Nuttall. Just had to back off slightly. 
and uh, regain that rhythm as he now closes back up onto our leader, John Yor. Out, though, of this race, it looks like that's the number 15 car. Patrick Blakely Edwards in the Fraser Nash pulling off to the side out of that car. Marshall's doing a great job of uh, making sure that is safe and out the way. No yellow flags needed for that one on this occasion. You're still leading this race, though, in the Cooper, but Will Nuttall, who started on pole, has not let him out of his sight. It's raging between a tenth of a second to three tenths to less than a tenth of a second between these two. Side by side once again, Nuttall alongside. Can he make it through? No. John, you're just carrying way more speed around the outside. So confident to carry that speed through and keep his position out in front your leads now one of the beauties uh, for, for this duo they race a lot together they understand where to place the cars and they understand whether the rival is going to take a risk or not and all along all that John Yor is showing is the inside line, and that's the tighter line, therefore the slower line. But each time they go to a corner where overtaking could happen, like into Laban. Will Nuttall is just trying to unseat him, just trying to put the pressure on. But right now, running down the Laban straight, it does appear it's a bit more grunt for John Yor in his Cooper Bristol ahead of uh, Will Nuttall. But Will closing in, and how good are they on the brakes? Light, nimble, but these drivers really know how to extract the maximum from these cars. The rest, some distance further back, Ian Nuttall in third place is seven seconds down after two laps are on the board. It's going to be even more when they complete this, the third lap, the tail out on the edge of uh, the exit of the chicane from John Yor. Again, a better exit from the chicane from the chasing Will Nuttall. The gap between them on the line, 69 thousandths of a second. Side by side, coming through Madrid, Yor on the inside, Nuttall on the outside. You can see just how hard he's working the steering wheel. He had the outside line, he tries to tuck back into the inside. John Yor is the leading car, but they're now side by side. Can Nuttall make the move? He might just have a nose in front as they make their way down the street. Nuttall's going to have the inside now. They're so close to touching wheels. It's absolutely precision racing for the lead of the race. The first race to kick off proceedings here at Sunday's 81st Group of Members meeting at the Parnell Cup. And my oh my, are we being treated for a race. John Yor holding out at the moment to keep that lead in the Cooper. But Will Nuttall is side by side with him and has been for the majority of this lap so far but you're ahead for the moment I think his motto must be no surrender because when we had the changing of the guard we had you're on the outside rather than the inside uh, this time around I thought the changing had happened because a better run through the second part of Madrick from the chasing will not all therefore he was on the inside line for Fort Water surely surely that should have been his lead but John York is not letting him through but now Will Nuttall's in front, but again, it's the point of where's the next corner coming, and with it all covered, John Yor goes back in front. What's happening in the rest of the race? I can watch these two race all day. <laughs> absolutely, we can. This is the battle for the, lead, for the lead, and there's absolutely nothing between them, but you know what's going to be interesting is they're going to catch up to some traffic in front of them. How can they navigate that? As we come across the line once again, side by side, Will Nuttall at the inside, John Yor sweeps round the outside, carries more speed, holds that lead for the time being, it's Ian Nuttall in third behind there. Nigel Batchelor, who actually started down in third, has really managed, and had a, had a terrible start, has managed to get back up into fourth spot. So a good recovery for the Keith Climax uh, car. Meanwhile, back up at front. This is where our eyes have to be, because this is where the racing is. And Bruce, traffic is going to be crucial in how they navigate it. They both successfully got them through the back two cars in this grid. John Yor holding out at the moment, but it's going to prevent Will Nuttall from trying to get a good rise through. Saying that, he's had a great run out of the exit, but there's a car on the inside. Can't move to the right hand. Has to tuck in behind Yor for the time being. So this is just helping Yor out a little bit, the traffic. Who can keep the momentum the best? It's about where they find the back masters. They managed to go past the... Uh, the delay at all, but that was the one that started from the pit lane. It's going to be where they find it. They've got a clear run, no cars ahead of them inside as they go through the kink on the lap and straight. They come down to Woodcut. And the place that it could be, they could get the worst interruption is into the chicane because really, for a driver in front of a slower car, they don't really have many options in the chicane. It's incredibly narrow, and the fans really starting around the circuit, probably all around the world on the streaming, are watching absolutely very zenith of historic racing. There may only be two cars in that lead group.
they're, they're separated by a whole tenth of a second, Harry. I know it's a shock, it's been under that before. We've been talking thousands per second. And again, punching out Shkane, and this time, Will Nuttall actually can clock a lap with the lead. What an exit for Will Nuttall out of the chicane, side by side. More grunt, more power, just carrying more momentum. And now Will Nuttall into Madrick to kickstart the next lap, takes the lead of this race. Will Nuttall in the Cooper, who started on pole, lost out early doors to John Yor. But my oh my, have we absolutely been treated to a scrap. This was the move side by side, a little look to the left-hand side in his mirror for Will Nuttall, just to see where Yor was, if Yor was going to try and squeeze him. No, all playing very nicely indeed. Traffic still to navigate, but Will Nuttall now out in front, trying to go three for three when it comes to Parnell Cup wins. Two Coopers battling it out for the lead, and now Nuttall's got ahead. Couple of tenths adrift now as John Yor. Has something, has Yor gone too hard too early? Is he now just trying to preserve what he's got left in that tank? Can he catch back up? I think he can actually, because uh, al although he was out qualified by Will Nuttall, it's where they find the back markers. AC Monoposto being overtaken there. Maserati up front. It's really going to be where they find the back markers. But Will Nuttall has been supreme getting the power there, getting his Cooper balance out of Chicane, and that's where he's had his advantage. But the shoe very much on the other foot. But uh, 17 seconds for the back is uh, Ian Nuttall in third place. Nigel Batchelor, they're all thereabouts. The number 37 we're looking at is a, a unique car, the AC Bristol Monoposto, built for hill climbing uh, from a, the remains of a crash sports car. That's how it was interchangeable in the 19, 1950s. Yeah, this uh, battle a little bit further down between the 37 and the 33, Clegg and Phillips uh, for 12th and 13th at the moment, as you say, uh, that is currently undergoing. But a little bit further back, top 10 score points in this race. You can see the top 10 on your screens at the moment as the two Coopers who are leading the way. But now that Will Nuttall has got back in front of John Yor, the gap now slipping back to almost a second between the two leaders. And here they are. Nuttall ahead of your still. Your though hasn't let him completely out of his sight, but they are in a race of their own because Ian Nuttall is 20 plus seconds behind these two uh, in the third. Then Nigel Bachelor, I think, will be quite pleased uh, to have recovered from his poor start in the Keith Climax. Absolutely plummeted through the field off the start and was surrounded and found himself in the mid pack. Has now clawed himself back up to fourth. Spinner for Julian Wilson in the ERA. A lovely 360 makes his way back round and it's almost like nothing happened well the important thing was he came within about his rear wheels as they spun round within a, a few inches of the grass and of course uh, after a cold night that would have been very slippery indeed running in seventh place Jim Wilton that will probably drop him down to about tenth or so but uh, the, the spin was contained well, he, he was, was on, on the, the grass. grass on the way in he was trying to go past the enormous Bentley Bonato Hassan special oh my word heart rate said to be over 100 beats a minute in that particular moment but as he approached Madrick with the image of just a tire wall and a grass verge in front of him three cars coming in behind and look somehow maybe more by luck than judgment Julian Wilton managed to contain the car within the tarmac once he got back on yeah the, the other moment. ERA the 44 Ben Fiddler in the on the in the car for that one just doing a good job of keeping to a tight line to avoid that Ben Fiddler actually had a really good start initially started 15 now up into eight make that uh, seventh with uh, Julian Wilton falling down a few positions after that uh, spin up out in front though 1.2 seconds now covering the uh, leaders Nuttall leads in front of John Yor two Coopers out there leading the way yeah what I'm observing is the fact that having got through there have been a few twitchy moments from Will Nuttall he is really really pushing on because he's aware that they will come across more back markers and as we I said before and again as he goes into Lambert you can see constant readjustment of the of the of the line but certainly Will Nuttall's just trying to build a bit of a cushion he set the fastest lap of the race last time around so uh, you know he's clearly on song but I still think there's something John Yor's got eight and a bit minutes to try and fight back the Alvis of Alex Simpson has just made a move on the ERA of Fiddler got up into seventh nice little scrap going on there has been coming for the last couple of laps so Simpson up a couple of positions from where he started in that Alvis Fiddler uh, down to eighth of the ERA and then the spinning ERA we saw a few moments ago recovering now in around that ninth spot. Yeah, just looking at the driver who started very near the front, fifth on the grid, it's the, it's the yellow nose on the pale blue car, the AC Monoposto, and for Charles Blake, he's fallen down outside the top ten and just hasn't found the form he had in uh, practice. The helmet looks though that Rubens Barrichello is racing, of course that's not Rubens, but it's Michael Birch, car number 70, down, uh, down the order. He was the one that had real trouble getting it fired up, so he would have started uh, after everybody else in his uh, Maserati 4CM from 1935, ex-works car.
raced at all the great circuits of the day, and now Michael Birch, who has a lot of historic cars he likes to go and play with, and uh, really puts on a fabulous show. But today he's not in his normal territory, but he's still having a cracking race. We have really been treated early doors this morning to an absolutely wonderful scrap for the lead. Uh, we're just looking now at this uh, battle uh, between uh, 11th and, well, 11th and trying to navigate a little bit of traffic there. The number eight of Klaus Dold and the Maserati 6CM gets out of the way uh, to allow. That's uh, Rettemeyer in the number two. Uh, that's the Maserati 8CM. Joseph Rettemeyer currently battling uh, with the uh, aforementioned Clegg. But that Maserati is very, very beautiful. Just in, not just in appearance, but its uh, its provenance is phenomenal. Raced by Whitney Strait, B. Beera, the the Prince of Siam, and Kenneth McAlpine, and it just looks absolutely exquisite. It'd be a, a monumentally great road car. A lot of these cars just look as though they're only racing cars, but the Maserati is the time to look as though they, you'd have very much wanted to have them on the road. Into the chicane they go. Joseph Rettenmar positioning his car very well, but in the background, wait a second, wait a second. Here comes the race leader, tail out as he exits the chicane. It's Will Nuttall, look in the mirror, how close is the chasing John Yor? He's on the other side, look in your other mirror. Uh, is, is it going to be just over a second? It's actually 2.3 seconds, so more than I thought. But, uh, of course, now going through Madrid, two-part corner, being interrupted. He's got to go around the outside, he's compromised his line, so that gap from two and a bit seconds. And finally, Charles Clegg's notice says, go on the inside, but that means a tighter exit from Madrid. And what does that mean? Compromised momentum. So John Yor would have spotted this thinking, right, those two parts I've made, I've got to pass them and do it better. Yeah, getting a good lesson from Nuttall in front of him. He's actually been able to really close up on Nuttall, but John Yor in the number six. Cooper just trying to get past uh, that beast of the Maserati 8CM. Just gets a little bit tucked up behind, but then makes it through. So the leaders make their way through on the traffic. Uh, still around a couple of seconds, the gap. So all about evening out at the end of it. Will Nuttall holding on for the time being, but still pushing that Cooper to the absolute maximum. Well, I tell you what, going through that traffic, it definitely compromised the leader, Will Nuttall, more than John Yor. And in the opening sector of this lap, uh, John took back 1.8 seconds in the first three timing sectors. And then just after that, he really got caught a bit behind Joseph Rettenmeyer. But that's the trouble. You catch back markers. If they're one at a time, you've got scope. But if they're having a battle, they're in the heat of the battle. They maybe don't notice you quite as much. And also maybe don't want to compromise their little battle. So they don't maybe move over as much as the, the front runners would like them to. Uh, we saw the spinner of uh, Julian Wilton oh, a few laps ago down, uh, well, was in, uh, down in ninth. He's managed to actually recover in the ERA up, back up into seventh. So there's pace in that ERA from Julian Wilton, who's recovered now. Picked off Fiddler in the other ERA and Simpson uh, in the 93 Alvis as well. So a uh, little 360 spin back up in front. That Clegg Rettenmeyer battle that we've been seeing, nip and tuck at the moment, is going the way of the AC of Charles Clegg. He's just managed to get it back in front up into 11, 1.3 seconds between uh, that AC and the Maserati ACM at the moment. Yeah, certainly. The, the spinner, Julian Wilson, going very, very well indeed. Oh. Oh, oh, my God, he's having a race of real instant, put on the grass before, and then he, he's had a bit of a clatter there, and racing alongside uh, number 18 is, is Nisia, so this is a case of a driver. Now he's looking down, Julian Wilson thinking, oh, I'm not sure that was entirely good. These cars are incredibly robust, but they're not really made to go clattering into another. So again, it was a case of a quicker driver coming through, and uh, unfortunately it takes two to tango and a bit of a clash. I think that was the Delage, wasn't it? That yes, came it was. in to, to the right-hander and, and uh, touched wheels. Uh, Volker Hitchens at the wheel of that down in 17th. Uh, at the moment is that Delage, but yeah, that was a, a scary one. And look at that, three and a half minutes left in this race. Where is the time gone? It's Will Nuttall who leads this race, started on pole, but actually it was John Ewer and the other Cooper who started alongside him that got the best start, and we were absolutely enjoying a fantastic battle for the lead. In the end, after a few laps, it went the way of Will Nuttall, is kept around about a second and a half gap at the moment. Now, we, why have one Nuttall when you can have two? Looking at Ian Nuttall, he's been holding down third place since pretty much the start of the race, helped in no small part by a dreadful start from third on the grid from Nigel Batchelor, but Nigel Batchelor in the key fell down to about seventh place, he's up now to fourth, he's been there for a while, he's closing with each lap, but as you said, under three minutes remaining, can he catch Ian Nuttall? At the end of the last lap, the Nuttall's Cooper was, I think, 2.7 seconds clear of... The chasing Keith, the metallic green Keith car number 14. It's closing in all the time. Let's see, has either of those cars been interrupted by the back markers? Oh, I think it stayed at about the same margin. Let's look, waiting for the gap to come through. Nigel Batcher, 3.6. He had been closing, didn't get the better of that. So maybe Ian Nuttall can make it two Nuttalls on the podium.
Michael Birch in the Maserati who had to start from the uh, pit lane has uh, had a really nice recovery in that 1936 works car. Just got himself up into 12th spot uh, after a tough start. So he's uh, picked off the cars behind him. We've lost Patrick Blakeney Edwards early on in the Fraser Nash, pulling off to the side with a, a seeming issue. Uh, and that's roughly what's happened further back in the pack. Uh, 11 laps been and gone, less than two minutes remaining of this opening race for Sunday's 81st members meeting the Parnell Cup. We're looking at Grand Prix, Formula 2, Wachoret cars racing between 1935 and 1953. And at the moment, it's Will Nuttall looking to make it three Parnell Cup victories in a row in his Cooper. John Yorris second, Ian Nuttall 30 seconds back in third. Yeah, and about two seconds down on him is car number 14, the Keith, the car that was all ready for the 1954 season. And then the engine builders there, Country Climax, decided their FPE V8, they thought it was a great engine. Then they heard the power outputs for the new formula that were being achieved by the likes of Ferrari. And went, you know what, maybe we won't go racing after all, but it's great to see that car being pushed very, very hard indeed by Nigel Batchelor. But it's a case of what might have been. A dreadful, without that dreadful start, he would have been ahead of Ian Nuttall. But Ian looks as though in the number 33 Cooper, that he's got enough in the tank, enough uh, of an advantage to get it through to the end of the race. One minute precisely remains. Beautiful drive so far from Will Nuttall and John Muir as well, early doors, was placing his Cooper in all the right places to keep Nuttall at bay for as long as he could. Nigel Batchelor with a great recovery, as you say, started in third, fourth start in the Keith Climax, now back up into fourth. Uh, we haven't seen much, actually, of Alexander van der Hoff in the Alpha F2, but he's had a very steady race uh, and currently looking for a top five spot in that Alta. Uh, and it's the top ten that score points and big points up for grabs to score for your house as well. 250 points uh, for the winner. Currently, it's looking like Will Nuttall's going to scoop them all up, even as the fastest lap overall as well. And uh, let's just have a look a little bit further back. Michael Birch might well get some points as well, having started from the pit. They just made his way up into the top ten as well. So a great recovery drive from the Maserati. But will Will Nuttall get over the line just as it clocks down? Or will we get another lap? We're not too sure on that one. I think he did take the checkered flag. So Will Nuttall, as the clock came down to zero, takes the checkered flag, makes it three Parnell Cup victories in the Cooper. Will Nuttall takes victory in the first race of Sunday's 81st members meeting. John York put up a sterling effort in the early laps of this race. OK. Well, we, we initially, well, so I'll tell you what, we're, we're, we might have, we have another racing lap, actually, because on our timing screens, it said checkered flag, and now it's gone back to green flag. So we might, well, he might have just got over the line before they counted down to zero. Either way, we'll keep you up to date, but uh, Will Nuttall hasn't lifted off the pace. Um, and more to the point, John Yore definitely hasn't no. lifted off the pace. The recovering Julian Wilkins who's had a little bit too much... Uh, Incident in this race, a spin and a clash. The checkered flag is there. I reckon they'd have got past. I was a bit surprised to say checkered flag on the screen, but the drivers have not seen the checkered flag. So what they do, they have to race on. And what they really don't want is three cars across the track in front of them. And so for Will Nuttall, who'd done all the hard work the first half of the race, he got through into the lead. Oh, and now around yeah. the outside goes John Yore. But at the Lavent Strait is anything but straight. There's a little bit of constriction there. And uh, <laughs> Yore's going to speed around the outside. Is he going to be able to do this on the final lap? Traffic holding back. Will Nuttall Yore gets onto the ground. The rear end sticks out, he manages to keep control. Will Nuttall, could he have lost it on the final lap? The checkered flag didn't come out, it will now be out and waving. Will Nuttall will take the flag and will take the win. But he nearly lost it at the end. Half a second between Will Nuttall and John Yore, the two Coopers fighting it out all race long. But in the end, it is three Parnell Cup wins for Will Nuttall. John Yore second, it's a Cooper 1-2. Ian Nuttall makes it a Cooper 1-2-3 in third.